So what I would challenge this young man or, or, or young woman to do is you have to look inside of yourself and see what you really want. What, what are you passionate about? We use these words and these little phrases of only the strong survive and all this other crap. They're all just fucking words. I get so tired of hearing people just talking. Like right now, someone may think God is just talking. <laughs> you don't know me. So when I speak, I speak from passion. I speak from experience. I, I, I speak from suffering. I have to tell this young man or woman that the only way I believe, and this is just my experience in life, the only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer, to grow. To grow, you must suffer. You can become the kind of person that is so in tune with the values that you have and what you actually want that when feelings rise up, you can choose to act however you want, despite them. Even if you're tired, you can still go to the gym. Even if you're annoyed with your spouse, you can still speak in a manner that's loving. Even if you don't feel like doing that hard work, you can still push yourself to do it. Your feelings aren't a choice. Your behavior and your thoughts are always a choice. Several people live to be 100 years old. And they have great lives and they have great kids. The kids go to college and all sorts of stuff. But somewhere in their life, there was a point where they had a decision to make. They can go left or right on this path. Left was the easy route. Right was the hard route. A lot of people take the easy route. And they had a good life that way, but the better life was going to the right side. And you may have 20 years of pain and suffering to get past it, but a lot of us die never truly starting our journey. And I would tell this young person, you gotta start your journey. It may suck, but it will. It will come out the other side when you're coasting. Many people are suffering from battle fatigue. They've been standing a long time, trying to break the addiction, believing for the promotion, praying for that family member, but hasn't happened yet. They never dreamed they'd still be single, still be dealing with the illness, still be trying to get the loan. Now they're tired. Let me encourage you, your time is coming. Your due season is on the way. Don't let time talk you out of it. Don't let discouragement cause you to give up. Don't let negative thoughts convince you to settle where you are. You were born to succeed, to win, to conquer all difficulties, and to have all your faculties fully developed. Make up your mind you're going to do it every day, every day, every day, until you don't have to think about it, and then you'll automatically do it. I guarantee you this idea will change your life. Think about it all day, because that is definitely an idea that will give you results that will stick. No matter who you are, no matter where you are in life, you can take the lid off of your job. If you're wondering if you still have the lid on in your life, here are some clues that's going to let you know that the lid is still on. If you're not excited about waking up in the morning, if you're sitting around bored out of your mind, if you got time to do everything anybody asks you to do, you probably got the lid on. If when you tell your dreams to all your friends, it makes sense to them, you got your lid on, man. Your dreams should be, should not make sense to everybody. You got to say something that make people go, how you going to do that? That's when you got the lid off. And if I were you, I'd do that. I'd take the lid off. It's not always going to be easy. There are going to be challenges. There's still going to be curveballs thrown at me. But I, I, I can't become uh, introverted. I, I, I have to continue to get outside myself because when you're uncomfortable, that's the only way you're going to grow. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. It, it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. You face your fears, you become the person you want to be. You run from your fears, you're not living. You're alive, but you're not taking the freedom. You're not running the day. The day's running you. You always be the fucking servant, not the master, guys. We all fall down in life, guys. The question is, who gets back up? Again, it's not the potential of the individual. It's not the genetics. 
It's a perseverance that never say die attitude. If you constantly keep throwing shit against the wall, eventually something will stick, guys. Never give in to what you want. We need trust, right? We need trust. When we're surrounded by people who believe what we believe and trust starts to emerge, when we trust them and they trust us, we're more willing to take risks. We're more willing to experiment, which requires failure. We're more willing to explore and go somewhere that no one has ever gone before with the confidence that if we fail, if we trip over, if we turn our backs, that those within our community, those who we trust and who trust us, will look after us while we're gone, will pick us up when we fall over, will help us when we're hurt. Our very survival depends on it. Courage, someone who has, is, 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 has, the, has the courage no matter what to um, believe in something, hold heartily and follow that with faith and courage to just go and, and if I was able to do it, you can too. You know, and you, but you need to start making that choice. You need to make that choice right now for yourself. There are people who've lost their arms, lost their sight. There have been people that have been through the most horrific experiences in life, and they found a way to still be happy because they've made the decision that life is too short to suffer. God will use the foolish things to confound the wise. God can use the man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet to prove that it's not about Nick. It's not about his ability. It's not about him and his strength and how, how he speaks all around the world and uses his hands greatly as gestures and body language while he gets excited preaching. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. I didn't write my story. Jesus wrote my story. He knew me before the earth began. And I don't know about you, but yeah, it's good to have a job. It's good to have a relationship and get married and have kids. It's good to have that stuff. But until you find Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there will be always something missing. You can't rely on you because you will fail you every single time, just about. I needed Him, not just because of this, but for my heart, for my mind. By the grace of God, He kept me here on earth, even though I tried to commit suicide at age 10. The bullying at my school convinced me that I was a mistake, that I'd never eventuate to anything. Man, what a lie. When you realize it's just the devil, I say, just the devil because the devil's nothing compared to Jesus. I was listening to the encouragement my parents were saying, but then listening to the lies at the same time. The lies saying, you're not good enough, Nick, just give up. No, I am wonderfully and fearfully made according to Psalm 139. Oh, Nick, you should just give up. No, I can't do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But what we need healing first is in the inside and to hear the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God, when you hear a phone ring, you pick it up, okay? When you're sometimes dialing into heaven and it feels like He's not picking up, don't hang up on God. He's listening. I hung up on God because I didn't understand His plan. God said through my parents, Nick, God's got a plan for your life. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I have a whole plan in the future. I'm like, no way. There's no race like that. There's no heaven, there's no God. Look at all the pain in the world. If God loved the world, then why is He letting so much pain happen? Later on, you realize in the Bible, God doesn't give us pain, but whatever the enemy tried to use for bad, God turned into good. I can't do anything with my broken pieces, but there's nothing that God cannot do. I've seen pain, I've seen miracles. God allows things that we don't understand, but I want you to know if you hold on to Him, He'll hold on to you. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, even when you cannot walk, He'll carry you.